everybody, Erin James here from Crafty Housewife Yarns, and I recorded sort of a video list the other day that is uh, kind of the top, I forget even how many things are on the list. We're going to go with five. We'll say five. <laughs> My top five ways I like to use crafting, more particularly the fiber arts, for, let's say, stress relief. Uh, we've had a blog on this that's been on my website forever on uh, knitting for stress relief. And I have my other video on uh, like things I wish I'd known about knitting. So I don't know, it's kind of that same vein. It started as a rant that was in my head uh, about just being grumpy with how just grumpy the internet's being. I'm tired of like just every time you get online to try to, you know, see your friend's cute kids or what your other friend's knitting project is. It's like, you can't get away from it. Like everybody, there's ugh, too many opinions and too many, just too much everything. So uh, in our Facebook group, we always say, so I just think it's, it's accurate now because we've said it so many times that we are, it's like the friendliest fiber arts Facebook group on the, uh, on the interwebs. And uh, I really think we are. And I think like a big part of that is a lot of what is in these video tips. So I pretty much took all of these tips either directly from my own experience with kind of how I got started in all of the craziness that has resulted in all the yarn <laughs> and all the wheels and all the things um, in my own life as well as, uh, you know, things I've picked up along the way from, uh, you know, different fiber artists and friends online. Because that's kind of what's the double-edged sword with, uh, with online, is I have so many friends, like all the Crafty Housewife Yarn staff, <laughs> that are like people that are really close to me and that I feel very close to and I care about their lives, but like we don't live close to each other. And most of us have never met in person. So I have a lot of friends that way. So I feel like on one hand, the, oh, my bird says hello. <laughs> on one hand, it can be great because it can really, you know, give you friendships and connection where you maybe couldn't get it depending on where you live or like everything being shut down or whatever. But then it also can just be kind of a toxic place where, you know, I don't know. You can say literally anything and somebody's gonna take offense and there's all this pressure to, you know, make some sort of stand one way or the other, especially if you're a small business owner who's online, just, just saying. So I, uh, without further ado, here's my list on ways I have used the fiber arts or crafting to, uh, help alleviate some stress. And, uh, we would love to see you if you want to hang out. First, Get nerdy about something. I am a big believer in finding something that you just really get into, even if it's weird to everybody else and, uh, you know, i.e. spinning your own yarn. <laughs> and just really get into it. Like, I think that really helps. Like, I feel like those are the people, like, it's easy to get lost in, like, the depression of it all if, uh, you know, you don't have anything that just you can really research and talk about endlessly. So, I mean, that's what this whole YouTube channel's been for me, y'all are like my free therapy. But case in point, my dad retired a few years ago and he'd been working forever. And, um, you know, we were a little worried that he might go crazy when he retired, that, <laughs> that you know, he just wouldn't know what to do with himself. Instead, he wrote a book on Italian switchblades. And I'm very impressed by this because, but it's a great example of he was interested in something. He found other people that were interested in something. And through his like tireless, nerdy pursuit of learning everything there was to learn about them, he wrote a book. Like it's published, it's a thing. And so I just thought that was great. And um, I definitely can go along with that because I started this business that was never really supposed to be a business when I was trying not to have postpartum depression. And uh, I started knitting things and, and I ended up with a snarky business name that was never really supposed to be a business name and actually kind of offends and irritates people. <laughs> You're wondering. So, uh, but you know, it kept my brain busy. So here we are. <laughs> So that's uh, my tip number one, is find something to get nerdy about. And, uh, you know, if you need some suggestions, uh, knitting or crochet or weaving, or if you already do those things, and, you know, that's a, that's a good place to start. So the fiber arts is an excellent place for those of us that are already kind of crazy and neurotic, and we need something to think about. So, uh, or keep your hands busy. So that's tip number one. 
Tip number two, get festive. And uh, I love holidays, but I'm also really lazy. And I also have two little kids. And so that means that with school and everything in the whole world, it's like you can just get like holiday to death. And so I, in the past few years with my kids being little, have been very guilty of being like, I don't want to. <laughs> with like all the things and I know that everybody's like you own a craft business so you know they picture me sitting here like hodgepodging Christmas wreaths or something and I'm not I have that's not historically been me but in an effort to not be so grumpy here lately with uh everything I just ranted about at the beginning of this video I've been actually reading some of the magazines that I subscribe to. Um, Martha, I love you. So yeah, I get been reading, so you know, Southern Living, whatever your thing is. I've actually been reading some of the magazines and then trying, I'm actually excited. I'm gonna, I baked some things and I'm going to try, uh, we love Halloween around here. I think y'all know that already. So my husband's usually the great carver of the pumpkins because he's better at it than me. But I have ideas of things I want him to carve on a pumpkin. So, uh, <laughs> and I actually, I have an idea and it's going to be going on my, uh, in my effort to uh, do stupid things just for fun more and not just so much a craft business for a craft business. I'm going to start doing silly crafts that usually involve yarn and they're gonna go on the Patreon, Patreon account and it's gonna be fun. So if you wanna see uh, what weird things I'm going to Hobby Lobby to get later, and may or may not involve yarn pom-pom spiders, uh, that's where that's gonna be. So more details on that. But I would definitely say embrace whatever season you're in. Go see fireworks, you know, get into baking Christmas cookies. Like, and I definitely get it. Like I said, I am lazy and I am not usually the one to do that, but I'm trying to work on myself on that. And oddly enough, it's been making me happy. It's been making me happy to have something else to focus on that's not work and not something I'm really obligated to do. So that seems to be uh, be helpful. Tip number three, not going crazy. Um, slow down. I know everybody who knows me is like, well, no, duh, Aaron, we've been telling you that for years. And you have, and I've been listening, and I'm, I'm trying. So all of the people in my life who love me have been telling me to slow down for years. I'm trying, and I'm even telling other people now. So I have, and I know I've talked about this before, problems with panic disorder, which the best I can describe that is where like normal people, you reach a threshold where you're like, I can't deal with this anymore. And then you freak out and like, you know, you slow down and go back down. If you have panic disorder, you, you have like this whole fifth gear that nobody else has. And when like, you know, it gets real, you can kick it into that fifth gear, which you at first think is like a superpower, but uh, cause you, you know, you keep doing things and getting stuff done, but then you eventually just completely self-destruct normally in the form of a panic attack or your entire personality changing. Um, so yeah, <laughs> in an effort to not do that, I have been trying to really make myself slow down, which relates to tip number two on the trying to embrace the holidays and, uh, you know, doing silly crafts. So for you, once again, that also in slowing down, and one of the things we talk about um, that I have information on in, uh, like I said, kind of the introduction of our yarn design course, you can use something like, even if you're a total beginner, but like I'm gonna knit a scarf, like just start at the beginning of whatever project you're gonna do and be like, okay, am I making the scarf for me? Am I making it for a friend? Do I, my friend really likes blue? Do I wanna do big yarn? Do I wanna do little yarn? And just kind of make yourself drag your brain away from whatever it is you're trying to freak out about and make yourself start planning all the little details of some sort of a knitting or crochet project is uh, super helpful. It with me with the slowing down and then bonus points if you can and if you've looked at any of the free patterns on our site most of them the ones designed by me anyhow are pretty brainless because I like brainless knitting because I want to brainlessly knit while watching something on Netflix with my husband so uh you know or those of you who are into all the true crime shows shout out my friend Heidi's new podcast coffee crime and crafts. So, you know, if that's your jam, 
for your slowing down while knitting, go find Heidi's podcast. So slow down. Four, embrace imperfections. Uh, I don't know. I was just talking about this with some of my girlfriends in our uh, like women's small group and was then talking to my husband about this last night because he is admittedly more of a perfectionist than me. And what they were, I'm sure many of you will identify with this. The general thinking being, I'm not even gonna start this project or thing or whatever because I don't feel like I can do it at like Mona Lisa quality, so I'm just not even gonna start it. And uh, so apparently that's a really common thing. I do not suffer from this problem. <laughs> I'm really, I'm kind of the opposite, whereas I, had trouble with so many things in school or the, my short non-athletic build. So sports, <laughs> like pretty much anything. There was not, and I don't mean the self-disparaging, but there were not really too many things that I came to that I was like, I am naturally awesome at this. So it was kind of a good thing for me because I had to learn how to just be like, well, if I'm going to do anything, I'm going to have to embrace the fact that I'm probably going to suck at it, at least to start with, maybe forever. And that that was okay. And I will show some pictures <laughs> of my recent and not so recent knitting projects. And this is uh, one thing at least knitting has helped me with. But, you know, when you're knitting and you get to that point and then you're like, oh, crap, there's a weird spot. And I have friends who are like ninjas, like with a drop stitch and can like go back down and get it and somehow like make it perfect. And you can't tell. I mean, I'll get it. I'll tie it back up. It, you know, it won't unravel, but there will be many a weird spot in my knitting. Um, lots of like weird what happened there. I like to think of it as sort of like stretch marks <laughs> on my knit. So yeah, my knitting has definitely, you know, and oh Lord help me if it's like a lace work thing, I'll be knitting and it's like, there's a nice lace work section in the middle and I'll be going real good for a while. And then all of a sudden there'll be kind of a part that zigs and then I'll get it back. And then there'll be a part that kind of zags and then I'll get it back. So for me anyhow, knitting definitely taught me how to embrace uh, some imperfections and just block it out and wear the sweater anyway. Cause you know, nobody's staring that hard at that part of your sweater. So, you know, it'll be fine. <laughs> That's definitely served me well in life. I. Uh, tagged my friends I was just talking about in a picture of me on Instagram if you looked lately. We just did this huge mini skein project or mini cakes rather, little cakes of yarn for twice sheared sheep for an advent box they're having. And it was a huge, crazy, scary project that, um, you know, Dawn asked me if I wanted to be a part of and I was like, yeah, let's do it. And then after I said, yeah, let's do it. And all the yarn showed up at our studio and we had to disperse it to the staff because there was no way humanly possible that just I could do this. Um, you know, it definitely was a project I had to jump in before I knew that we could do a good job of it. But we did do a good job of it and I'm really excited about it. So that's what the picture was. I tagged my friends that we'd just been talking about this and was like, hey, in case you needed a visual representation of me jumping headfirst into something that I was not going to do a perfect job of, but I was going to try. <laughs> Here you go. So um, embrace the imperfections, uh, knitting or otherwise. The next two tips, I'm going to squish into one tip because there's no point in them being two. One is pretty much what we already touched on, which was very helpful for me and how this whole business got started was distract yourself from crazy repetitive thoughts with some sort of a knitting or crochet project. And that's what I was talking about with like the scarf. Cause I started doing this when I started this business that was never really planned when my second child was a newborn. And so, you know, you do the thing where you get up and you're like crazy. And at least with me, my brain is crazy at three in the morning when you're up with a baby. And I would be worried about stuff that like the next morning, I'd be like, why was I even thinking about that? It makes no sense. And uh, so what I did instead was like I said, I would pick some sort of weird hypothetical project for me or someone else or something else I wanted to try. And uh, I would literally just pick it apart step by step by step while I was feeding the baby. And then that gave me a safe thing to think about. And it was like putting my brain in like a safe little padded cell where it could go in a circle, but like it wasn't gonna hurt me. <laughs> so that 
was tremendously helpful for me. And like I said, that's a big part of what I've got information for and like kind of that introduction on, uh, I think we called it like mindfulness and crafting, um, which is now on our patron account. So that's what a lot of that is. And then the next tip, which I'm just gonna go ahead and lump in here was consider spinning. <laughs> if you're already a yarn lover and a knitter or crocheter, the reason I got into spinning also during the same point in my life, actually a little bit earlier, it was when I was still pregnant with baby number two and just did no sleeping because I was a miserable pregnant lady both times. So I set up and spun a bunch of ugly yarn instead. But taking that mindfulness in knitting projects thing a step further, if you are designing your own yarn, then that gives you a whole nother thing you can think about. You can think about what type of wool you want to try if it's one you haven't tried yet shout out my local wool <laughs> what how do you want to spin it do you want to spin it thick or thin or worsted or woolen or do you want to add sparkles i mean you can just go to town if you're designing your own yarn and then you have your own yarn and then you're like man this thing's crazy what do i do with this and then you take the crazy yarn and then that gives you a whole nother thing to think about of what to make with the crazy yarn which we have patterns um which is my and a whole ebook which is my whole uh, answer to what do you make with the crazy yarn. And you see where all of this all kind of originated <laughs> from uh, the same uh, corner of my own neurotic mind. So there you go. So that was my two tips crammed into one.